I tend to think of um, acts of citizenship with uh, my currently favorite political philosopher that is Spinoza reread with um, Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari. And so an act of citizenship is whatever increases your capacity to act and intervene in the world. And that is a productive mode of, um, almost creative mode of intervention. And it is productive and creative even when it is negative. I'll give you an example. A lot of acts of citizenship are actually acts of resistance. They're oppositional. Mm. They're acts of protest. Um, and they may even be acts of civil disobedience. Um, uh, my um, example would be my favorite at the moment, uh, the Pussy Riot, and what those women are doing in a context of lack of basic fundamental human rights, freedom of expression rights, um, and human dignity rights. And so it, even a protest, even something that may look blasphemous and offensive, is actually a productive act of citizenship because it intervenes in the public sphere to remind the public sphere of some basic issues that they are forgetting. So acts of citizenship empower you to intervene in the public um, and that empower me mo moment is a gesture of incredible generosity uh, and to quote Hannah Arendt, uh, love uh, of the world because why would you bother um, to actually intervene? So many people don't, so many people prefer apathy and you know, watching television. So an act of citizenship is a gesture of enormous love for the world towards which that gesture is directed, even when concretely it is an act of protest or disobedience that may appear violent, that may appear, as in the case of Pussy Riot, blasphemous. The concept of crisis must always be put in inverted commas. Um, uh, I think probably right now thinking of the crisis within the European Union, the financial crisis, the austerity measures, the protests of people, the disenchantments of so many of our citizens, I think we would have to look at uh, the critical discourses that we are producing, precisely from crisis to critical. What narratives are we putting over this crisis, which is a global crisis, which is a financial and fiscal crisis, which is not indexed on any particular reality. It's actually far stronger in other parts of the world, I would think. Um, uh, for instance, the United States, where it is, it is dramatic. Um, so what kind of discourses are circulating about this? What kind of critical gloss are we putting over the crisis? And the we in question here would be people like us, the people who are paid for doing research, paid for producing ideas and uh, communicating them to the larger populations. Um, anger is absolutely rightful. Um, uh, violence is not exactly justified. The tendency to blame the European Union for everything is absolutely silly. Uh, destructive and unfair and um, there is a lot of recycling of cultural memories that come from different crises. If you look at the iconographies that are coming up in the mass protests, particularly in the south of the world, my own country Italy included, we see lots, lots of recycling of Hitler's portraits, the moustaches floating around. Now what does that say about the cultural imaginary and the memories? What is coming up? What is surfacing here? Uh, the other aspect that interests me about the crisis is the gender aspect. It's a little bit of bad luck, I suppose, that both the head of the IMF and the head of the biggest and wealthiest democracy in the EU are women. Christine Lagarde and Angela Merkel are being portrayed in the public sphere in manners which are completely inappropriate and unacceptable. I wonder whether they would be portrayed like that if they were men. So there is a multi-layeredness about the production of the discourse of the crisis, uh, which I think we need to look at carefully. And we would probably help our fellow citizens, the ones who are enraged and disenchanted, if we kept as intellectuals the tone of the discussion a little bit more dignified, a little bit more lucid, and try to uh, not encourage um, uh, people to seek a world revolution against the European Union, which is being blamed for everything, but on the contrary, ground them in their own reality and make them excavate a little bit their own memories, what is coming up here that has absolutely nothing to do with the reality of the moment. So a little bit maybe of moderation sounds like um, uh, an old lady, which I am at heart, um, and uh, more accountability for the sound bites we're producing in the public sphere. Are we not contributing to so, so some sort of moral and political panic, whereas in fact we should be calming people down and help them out of what is a global crisis by all standards and measures and if anything I would argue the European Union is protecting us from it um, to a very very large extent.
complicated one. I have argued in a lot of my research that the, we have the legal instruments to delink the legal structure of European citizenship from issues of nationality and ethnicity insofar as one is born British, German, Italian, Irish but becomes European. The level of European citizenship is supranational and that supranational um, level would allow us to then uh, be able to um, attribute European citizenship to other people who are not born in those particular uh, member states. Um, the legal measures are in place, the political will is not. Um, so we have a restriction of this fa fantastic legal instrument that is European citizenship law, a restriction to um, a new nationalist way of using it um, with all the selection of um, uh, sort of a s selective attribution of citizenship, the whole question of borders and migrations that comes up with it. We need to actually um, infuse the political will within the legal machinery that we already have and I would plead for applying a principle of citizenship based on residence and taxation. No taxation without representation. All the people who are living on our territory, working and paying their dues ought to be treated as citizens within this, the European Union citizenship law, not within the nation state, because they're not nationals. But you can be a citizen without being a national. That's precisely the strength of the European legal machinery. We should embrace that, enact it, and push it further to a genuinely open, selective of course, but open uh, European um, citizenship. We do have the legal instrument, we don't have the political will.